of course, the topic of the moment is the Ukraine and someone that has your extensive experience with diplomacy and uh, international policy. How would you explain to somebody like me that doesn't have uh, that insight what's happening in, in Ukraine right now? Well, first of all, let me just uh, thank uh, the Tommy Thompson Center and Alex for the, uh, the invitation to come to uh, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Uh, the other UW, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's really a pleasure. And, and the staff and faculty and the students have really been so warm and gracious and welcoming from last night into some of the sessions that we had this morning. So I really, really enjoyed this so far and looking forward to our conversation here and hope we can have lots of questions uh, from the audience. Um, but let me just say that uh, the situation in Ukraine is obviously very complicated. And the reality is that Ukraine is a separate country, it used to be part of the Soviet Union, but is a separate country recognized by even China and, and, and uh, uh, the international community as a separate country. Um, and uh, it's been observed that Putin has, and Russia has you know, various objectives. He wants to somehow reestablish the old Soviet Union um, and, um, and bristles at the fact that uh, many of the former uh, uh, members of the Soviet Union are trying to uh, be part of the EU or even want to join NATO. Uh, he's very upset at the, some of the movement of NATO forces closer to the border. Um, but uh, obviously it's a, just a deplorable situation with the casualties among civilians uh, and the indiscriminate bombing of civilian uh, uh, facilities, including hospitals and so forth. And um, so many millions of Ukrainians trying to move Get, get out of, of, of uh, Ukraine and get across the border. Um, we've, the, the West has imposed some very tough sanctions against uh, Russia, uh, cutting them off from basic financial services, the financial markets, and, and it's really gonna cripple uh, and impact uh, the Russian economy and therefore daily uh, interactions uh, for the Russian people. Um, and goods will not be able to flow in and out a lot of companies uh, and people won't have access to their funds. And so it will have a, um, a, a very devastating and severe impact on, on the everyday people of Russia. Will it be enough is a good question. And um, how far is the West willing to go by way of sanctions and, and um, countermeasures to Russia? Because quite frankly, uh, some of the trade that's been exempted from these sanctions is the trade of energy. 40%, I think, of uh, oil comes from uh, Russia, that Europe uses, comes from Russia, and, and uh, not as much of natural gas, or maybe it's the other way around, I always get them confused. But the reality is that Europe depends so much on natural gas and oil from Russia. So how far are the Europeans willing to go to punish Russia to retaliate against Russia, knowing that it's going to really hurt them as well. And so this is, gets into that whole issue of human rights and, and, and your values and how far you're willing to stand up for your values um, and the pain and the consequences you might bear and willing to, be, to bear when you uphold these various principles. Uh, when you say we, we, we cannot tolerate what China is doing or Russia is doing to what extent? Um, the United States right now, we're seeing a huge increase in the price of gasoline and will people say, well, it's too much, therefore we need to re relax our, our sanctions against uh, Russia because we don't wanna pay more at the pump. Now, the reality is that the United States is actually exporting um, our oil. We are a, a big producer of oil. So then why is the price of gasoline going up? because there's not going to be enough oil around the rest of the world if we're limiting what comes out of Russia. So therefore, oil and natural gas is a more precious commodity worldwide. And if you happen to hold something that's now more valuable around the world, you can charge more for it. You know, it becomes more valuable. So the price at the pump goes up, not because we're short of oil in the United States, not because we get oil from Russia, but because what we hold now is so much more valuable for people around the world. And, and, but then the question is, are the American people willing to, 
the, the stomach back. Uh, in, as we say, we need to stand up against Russia.